1 p.m. Eastern. Next up, Tennessee Titans at Indianapolis Colts. Titans five and two, two and one on the road. Colts three and four, one and two at home. We're at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis, Indiana. And Crystal Warren saying Duval Homer probably game is beautiful. Great job, Crystal Warren. Great, great jobs. Uh, and Birdie says books have been getting smashed. Sharps have been, been getting smashed. This is going to change soon. We've seen that the public has been very successful in the last what four weeks at least. It could be five, but four weeks for sure. Okay, let's start with the market here, Bebzy, in this cold spot. Tennessee opening up at minus one. There is a one and a half on the board now, and this total is climbing quickly. Open at 48 and a half, now all the way up to 51 and a half at Pinnacle. The rest of the books are at 51, but you can imagine that they're going to follow Pinnacle's lead and add that hook. Titan, oh, let's take a look at where the cash is. My fault here. 4,678 tickets in. Only 20% of tickets on the Colts, 33% of cash. Then 56% of tickets on the under, 99% of cash on the under. So that's confusing with it going up three and a half points. Uh, I guess the idea would be that once it got up to 51 or 51 and a half, there was a big bet placed on the under. But the fact that Pinnacle is pushing it to 51 and a half uh, is confusing. Is confusing. Titans coming off an extremely impressive 27-3 home win over the Chiefs. Scored on their first five possessions, led 27-0 at the half. They also won their second game in six days over teams that played for the AFC Championship in January. Tannehill, 21 and 27 for 270 yards, one touchdown, one interception. A.J. Brown caught eight passes for 133 yards, one touchdown. First 100-yard receiving game this season, and he had it all by a halftime. 2020 Pro Bowler caught six passes for 101 yards and a touchdown and finished at the half, finished with eight for 133. Derrick Henry ran 29 times for 86 yards through a five-yard touchdown. This Titan defense had Mahomes under pressure all day. A finish with four sacks, nine quarterback hits. Uh, Taylor Luan was out with a concussion. It didn't matter. Uh, Kendall Lamb, though, started in Luan's place. Uh, hurt his ankle in the first half, didn't re return. So he was replaced by Bobby Hart, who was signed Wednesday off of Buffalo's practice squad. And they didn't skip a beat, man. Well, they stopped producing any offense in the second half, but uh, you know that's not all, all on Bobby Hart. But that should be something looked into anybody betting this game. So is Lewin going to be back? Is Kendall Lamb, his backup, going to be there? And if not, is Bobby Hart going to start on the offensive line? Linebacker Monty Ross, uh, Lewin, and wide receiver Chester Rogers were all inactive and are listed as questionable. Uh, Colts are heating up. Coming off their third win in four games, 30-18 victory in San Francisco. Wentz goes 17-26 for 150 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Also ran four times to 23 yards but fumbled once. Michael Pittman caught four passes for 105 yards, and they needed him. He looked good, and they needed him to look good. T.Y. Hilton was inactive. Paris Campbell will be out two or three months. Uh, just had foot surgery. Uh, Jonathan Taylor ran 18 times for 107 yards and one touchdown. Bebsy was on him. They still need to apply more pressure. Two sacks, five quarterback hits. Uh, cornerback Bo Pete Keys. Hamstring left in the first half, didn't return. Safety Julian Blackman was placed on IR right before the game. A uh, cornerback, well, not the day before, I should say. A uh, cornerback, Rocky Sin, offensive tackle, Braden Smith, defensive end, Kamoko Ture were all inactive last week and are listed as questionable this week. I imagine that Sharps are going to be on the Colts and the public is going to be on the Titans. Bebsy, take it away, interesting spot. Well, first and foremost, I, I, I got to say, the, the Colts, and especially Carson, Carson Wentz, did not play a good game. They, Jonathan Taylor played a great game. Jonathan Taylor looked fantastic. But again, I, I the reason I jumped on him was the space eaters in the middle for the Niners uh, were both out. Um, Carson Wentz, yeah, he threw a couple picks, but he also threw four other dropped picks and if this Niners team was in such a mess right now they should have dominated this team uh now you got the Tennessee Titans coming in they're a much better team uh than San Francisco is uh right now and they've got a much better running game San Francisco's rookie Elijah Mitchell was gashing gashing this Colts defense until they abandoned the run he still had the exact same line as Jonathan Taylor, but he had, I think he had 57 yards in the first two uh, possessions. 
So if they can't stop this broken down San Francisco rushing attack, how are they going to stop Derrick Henry? How? I, most teams can't stop Derrick Henry. So I'm going to be looking at Derrick Henry's rush props because normally I don't. Normally they're so high and I'm just like, ah, I'm going to stay away from that. But this one, if it's a reasonable number, I'm going to jump on it um, because I don't – I understand it's a divisional game. I understand it's a very important divisional game. This is a big swing game in the division right now. But I haven't seen a ton of great football from the Colts. And I, I've seen Tennessee route the Chiefs. And I've seen them, uh, you know, beat the Bills in, in uh, you know, pretty exciting fashion. So I understand it's a divisional game. I understand that the the popular look uh, from the Sharps is going to be the Colts and, and that the public is going to be on the Titans. But I think the public is right with this one. They, they're just too good. And I don't think Indy can stop Derrick Henry. And even if they can, they got options. They got AJ Brown. They got, I don't know, Julio's in, Julio's out. Is Julio fine? Uh, I will double check uh, Julio's status here right now. But this is going to be a very fascinating game where it will be the public against the Sharps. And I. Don't know what to do here. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's ready to go, Julio. Supposedly. Uh, let me just do one more. Yeah, yeah, ready to go. Good to go. Very, very, very interesting. Birdie saying Flames five one. Uh, Birdie, I, I thought that. My breakdown was so bang on, so why didn't I take the Flames, man? I mean, I'm, I'm not on the Devils, but the breakdown was so fucking salient, and I'm sitting here watching other people cash on the Flames and sitting here on the outside. But Tampa Bay Lightning are up 3-0. That was a great bet by us. All right. Uh, Ber Burgundy Bet says, fellas, just line open Titans plus one. If you like the Titans, don't wait. Do you want to make a move on the Titans, Pepsi? I don't know. I mean, I'm going to think about this one for right now. There's a, there's a lot of people I, I respect trying to talk me off of this, but. Benjamin says, take the over. What are your feelings about this total? It opened up at 48 and a half and it skyrocketed up to 51 and a half at Pinnacle. Um, I agree. If I was going to make a play on this, it would be the over. I um, again, I I don't I don't see either one of these defense defenses being particularly effective. Um, again, the Colts held the Niners down, but that's not that's not saying much. The the Niners' offense hasn't gotten going all year, and you know that I, I'm surprised there were as many points as they were given that torrential downpour. Um, so yeah, I don't. Again, this is another game where I don't think either defense is going to be able to slow down the other one's offense particularly well. See, I the way I saw that game from a total standpoint, that the, the rain can help offense because there's going to be fumbles, there could be field possession, yep. uh, great field possession spots. It's If there's not a ton of wind, then you can – then. There's points are going to be scored, and there wasn't a ton of wind. That wind advisory was done by eight. I well, felt... and they say and they say heavy rain is harder on a secondary mm -hmm. uh, than it is on the receivers because, of course, the receiver knows where they're going. Um, but I just saw a lot of, I just saw a lot of wounded ducks go up from both quarterbacks. <laughs> Worse ones from Jimmy. Although, what the fuck was Wentz doing when he pitched it to Al Shire? That was, yeah. that was one of the worst things I've ever seen. That might be the worst thing I've seen since the butt fumble. That was well, terrible. When that happened, I was like, oh, I'm not going to hit the over. I thought that, that was just a sign that I wasn't going to hit the <laughs> over. But it was a pretty easy, easy uh, casher. 